Um, I noticed when I when I started Island Transit uh, uh, that we had a lot of uh, computers that were in severe need of maintenance. They had not been uh, maintained. Uh, there was a lot of people complaining about problems. Uh, unfortunately, there were people that uh, had stopped complaining because they realized that it wasn't doing them any good. Um, and so when I came there, um, I was actually sitting in kind of a main room so I could kind of hear when people were having a problem because there would be swear words <laughs> muttered <laughs> and be like, well, what's the problem? And, oh, this computer crashed again. And I'm like, well, let's take a look at it. And go, oh, no, Judd's looked at it a bunch of times and, you know, it just can't be fixed. And so I'm like, well, let's take a look anyway. And when I took a look at the machine, it was severely overheating because it was plugged with dust. Well, it was an easy fix to pull the dust out and never had a problem again with it. Um, the uh, maintenance department was, was thrilled because I actually worked in the automotive industry and they, uh, Michael there was really thrilled because he knew, um, you know, I, I basically knew a lot of the problems um, that they were up against. You know, because I, I worked in an environment for 19 years with General Motors as a field engineer for them, which basically is a fancy title for somebody that fixes weird problems you know, <laughs> that they're having a, having issues with. And I could, could communicate directly with General Motors and uh, um, you know had privy to information that uh, other people didn't, and that and that helped a lot. But I was good at what I did. Um, when I uh, when I was five years old, my dad stuck a uh, uh, soldering iron in my hand and uh, you know we actually built a lot of little circuits and stuff uh, together he was an electrical engineer and I loved electronics and I, I loved cars and so General Motors was a good fit for me and I uh, built a lot of discrete logic boards and stuff you know to do little functions and finally realized that I didn't uh, I, I couldn't uh, build a board that worked on discrete logic because there's too many components and so I, I learned to program and use microcontrollers and, and programs and I, I grew up with computers and uh, really loved them and uh, I actually went back to school in 2000 to 2001 to brush up my skills and uh, basically focused on network security. Um, I actually uh, uh, found some other issues when I, when I uh, Actually, let's take a look at my. I have a little list here, so I, I don't I don't lose lose space too fast here. Um, basically, uh, one day we actually uh, uh, I actually noticed that uh, Judd had not been doing, uh, and this was very early on, uh, that there was some uh, Judd was getting an email from his uh, system that was saying that his bare metal backups were not being done, and this was going on for months. And when I noticed the problem, he said, well, yeah, I guess I better do something about that. Well, yeah, you haven't had a backup for months, and so we could go down and everything's gone. And uh, people were saving all their important information to the server, and they're expecting that to be there. And so uh, finally he got on the horn with the people um, that... Uh, you know, made the equipment and we figured out what was going on and, and got it fixed but he was just kind of putting it off for months and you know that's that was just playing russian roulette and uh, lost all those documents yeah it could have been a really <coughs> bad thing all those financials yeah it could have been a really mm -hmm. bad thing and uh who knows um basically when uh one day when when we went out uh, together there was a uh, with uh i went out with uh gary manker one day and there was a bus driver, and it was one of his old friends, and he had actually ripped the wiring off the side of a uh, off the side of a building because the, the wiring had actually you know gone from the pole, and it had been lowered. One of the companies you know had, had actually lowered it because it was uh, uh, I guess too close to another wire or something. I'm not sure why they they lowered it, but we found out that later on that they lowered it, and he hooked his bus on it. And, basically ripped some wiring off the side of a building. So we went out to take a look at it. And uh, basically, um, Gary was not going to have his friend do a, a P-test. And that's that's one of those things that there's enough damage that 
yeah, you, you, you're supposed to do that. Um, so Roy actually reminded him that, yeah, you know, I guess I should go do a pee test. And he goes, well, yeah, I guess so. And uh, that was one of those things that I, I found kind of interesting. I'm like, well, you know, you didn't, you know. Anyway, that, that was just an interesting thing that I found that it was like, well, it was one of his friends. So it's like, uh, well, I guess you don't have to go take a pee test and, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Dread free workplace and uh, motor yeah. carriers. Um, yeah. Yeah. CDL. Mm. So when we were uh, um, when we were ordering parts, um, one day Judd ordered a cable, and it was thirteen thousand dollars worth of cable. So this is this is a out of the ordinary purchase. Um, it was the wrong cable. And he had done it because there was a there was an estimate um, for doing some towers for repeaters, and he used the numbers off of that estimate. Well, that's a different cable. It's a totally different cable. Um, he should have just walked over, got the number off of the cable because the cables have numbers on the side of them. Got the number off the cable and ordered that, and verified that that was the right size. That was the right thing. Right gauge. Instead, he gets the cable in. He has it cut into five pieces without looking at it. So there's no way to send it back at that point. It's thirteen thousand dollars. Probably we couldn't have sent it back anyway, even in one piece. But we could have sold it for a lot more than what we did. So I get on the horn and I say, "Well, you know, we're, is anybody out there that can, you know, that wants this cable?" So we finally found a communications company that said, "Well, yeah, for uh, you know, for twenty percent, you know, we'll, you know, basically twenty cents on the dollar." You know, we'll we'll take it off your hands. So they did. That was one of those things that got swept under the rug. That's probably where the money went for the new radios because we use the old radios, and that's it's becoming a, a huge problem. And when I brought brought that to the attention of Gary, he said they're just all a bunch of whiners. And uh, basically, he said the same thing when. Uh, Michael's phone had failed. He said, oh, he's just a whiner. Yeah, he doesn't need a phone. It's like, well, uh, all this stuff's on his phone. Yes, he does. So, and that's one of those things that, that's, at, at my exit interview, that was one of the jabs that I gave him, you know, because I, I saw where the exit interview was going. <laughs> so I got in a few jabs on the way out and said, and said, yeah, you know, he called them all a bunch of whiners and everything. And he, he did this. And I brought all that out in front of, in front of Martha, which I, I knew would, would make me axed. But I, I saw where it was going. I was axed anyway. She so. already axed you. Yeah. 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 If you go into the exit interview, I think you're already done. So. There's only one door out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Basically, we had a whole lot of machines that weren't maintained. Um, I found a bunch of servers that only needed small amounts of, you know, repair to fix them, and Judd didn't understand how to fix them. Uh, he would order like a $6,000 server for a $5 fan that had failed, mm -hmm. and or maybe a piece of RAM or something. He didn't really understand how to diagnose hardware at all. And so I found boxes of old hard drives that were not in static bags. They, you know, and they are highly static sensitive. They were all stacked on each other, not in boxes. These things have circuit boards on the bottom of them that can be damaged by being stacked on top of each other. Yep. Um, and I asked him, I said, are those old just junk drives? Well, some of them are junk. I mean, and I said, some of them are good? He goes, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, where's the static bags? And he goes, I don't know. And I'm like, dude, they're supposed to be in static bags. That's, that's improper storage. And they should have cardboard in between them. Plug protector and ESD bags. Yeah. <clears throat> have something to protect the, them from damage. It just takes a touch of a human just to snap to blow out a capacitor or a transistor on it. Yeah, so we had massive amounts of stuff, but it was not being properly handled and taken care of. Um, basically, he would get on the phone, and they, they spent four thousand dollars, and they probably spent more than that since I, you know since I've been there, on calling their so-called gurus on the phone, and you know to help them with problems that they should know how to deal with, and. You know, a lot of it was 
had to do with the VMware. They had a guy that was supposed to supposed to set up all the VMware stuff, and I thought, well, if he did set up everything for us, then maybe he's worth four thousand dollars. Well, the guy didn't, and you know, he didn't get it all set up. So, so he was kind of kind of tutoring Judd, but this went on for three months. VMware is not that difficult. Why it took Judd three months, and, and this is this is why I was fired, was because I brought this to um, uh, Sean's Sean's attention. Sean Harris. And I shot him a, I shot him an email and said, you know, that I don't understand what's going on here, but I see a lot of a huge amount of waste. Uh, we're we're ordering equipment that is not being you know researched you know they would just order stuff they would they were trusting this one guy uh, that was basically kind of a parts guy uh, you know I saw so much waste uh, we, we actually had uh, we were supposed to be putting three monitors for the dispatchers we ended up with two because when they or, when they ordered the equipment they didn't know that they would only support two and so then they ordered this, these other things that were supposed to split off the line. Well, that doesn't work with virtual environments. They also did not um, do the research, you know, the, the proper testing. When we got done with it, we found out that there was a lot of video problems. Uh, namely, one of them was uh, Earth, uh, uh, Google Earth. Well, a lot of people there love to use Google Earth. It really helps, you know, to pinpoint things, and you can see what's going on in, in different places without going there. You can actually measure a piece of land without going there. <laughs> I, I look mean, in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's incredible. They they can actually scale it. You can actually measure it with pretty good accuracy. Oh, yeah. How big a piece of land is? Well, it didn't work with that because the video was not powerful enough. And that, that, that is stuff that should have been rolled out. You're supposed to test everything, test it, test it, test it, and then roll it, roll it out. That was never done. We started learning things the hard way. Um, when, when they planned the electrical plugs in that building, I think there was only plugs on one wall. And, and they planned the plug for the wrong place. I mean, there should have been plugs on at least every wall. So... We ended up with extension cords because people didn't put the furniture in the way that they thought it was going to go. So we ended up with extension cords. <laughs> Who builds a new building with one plug on one wall? Martha Rose, and then she gets Gary to wire the rest of them in for her. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder done. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust him to wire in. One I know. Of those things. I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not dishing on Gary, but Gary was uh, did, did some plumbing at one point in time and. He couldn't even fix an overflowing toilet. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it, was, yeah. it had the wrong flush valve in it. So <laughs> it's supposed to have one with a float on it. And, and you know, he couldn't even fl figure out how to, how to fix that. And by the time I got there, it was only like two weeks before we were going to move into another building anyway. So I didn't, I didn't worry about it. By the time I found there was a problem with it, you know, after it overflowed a couple times on people. <laughs> and it's like, so it, it was, a, it, it's amazing. It's, a, it's an amazing it's an amazing place. Anyway, getting back to the to the um, virtual environments, um, basically it took him three months, and he still didn't know what he was doing. I mean, he should have he should have been really really good. There was there's tons of free videos online to learn how to do it. I know I I took the courses myself, and uh, during the time that I was there, I wrote a bunch of software, and uh, I basically. You know, Gary says, well, can you do this? Well, can you do that? And I said, well, yeah, but it's going to take time. So he knew that I was spending all this time. Uh, when, it, when, I was leaving, when I was leaving the place, basically, they, Martha tells me, you know, that, uh, um, you know, this is after everything was done. Martha goes, well, you know that uh, um, overtime is, is uh, you know, by... Uh, um, have to have it authorized. Have to have it authorized, you know, ahead of time. And I said, well, basically, I thought Gary was authorizing it because I, I told him I said, it's going to take time, and I said, you know, I'm going to have to do it at home. Yeah. And so, and you know, I thought I was actually an exempt employee. I was just trying to help, but I was putting in 90-hour weeks, and uh, I thought I was actually doing a good thing, you know, trying to get it, get this stuff done because they really wanted this, what they called the wow effect, you know, and when they got it done, it was wow. like, wow, look at all this cool stuff that we've done. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was crazy. 
But, you know, basically a lot of times I felt like I was doing a lot of this stuff myself because, you know, Gary and Jug would put in a ton of extra hours and they wanted to get some comp time so that they could go flying and stuff like that. And 